Kathmandu, the capital and the biggest city in Nepal. At the national team training center, all is busy. The country's best players are training out of season under the charge of Japanese head coach Koji Giotoku, adapting to life in Nepal after arriving in March. In Japan, there are lots of rules that are obeyed, but in Nepal, there are no rules. Or well, there are rules, but they aren't obeyed. That's the biggest problem in life and in football here. But there are no insurmountable problems here. Nothing really surprises me. I have experienced all sorts of hardships, so I have no particular problems here. Nepal's new sporting director also made the move from Japan. When I first arrived here, I was so surprised. Cows walking the street and suddenly monkeys walking in front of the car. I was always being surprised. But I've recently got used to the Nepalese way of life. And now I can live without any worries. The Japanese duo arrived in a country still attempting to recover from the effects of a huge earthquake in April 2015. When you go into the old town, there are still many broken things everywhere, and that saddens me. I hope these areas get rebuilt soon. It concerns me that the national stadium is in disrepair and can't be used. Once it is repaired, we can play international matches again in this country. I know that Nepalese people love football. After last year's earthquake, we cannot play international matches within the country. So we cannot show the Nepalese people any international matches. I think they have high expectations for us. In Gyatoku, Nepal have a coach with experience working in Europe and Asia and a strong will to make a difference wherever he goes. He's very passionate. And I believe he's a top-level coach. The players are getting much better. Comparing them today to how they were, they're a completely different team and have improved so much. Each player is improving. I believe that's thanks to his talented coaching skills. But the long-term future of Nepalese football is in Takeda's hands. What surprised me when I arrived in Nepal was that here, there are no coaches. Well, there are coaches, but there are very few who can actually teach tactics. This is a huge problem for Nepal. That's why the national team and all the youth teams need a coach who can teach them. And I believe my job is to create more of these coaches. Nepal were knocked out by neighbours India in the first round of World Cup qualifiers last year. And it's in this tournament that their real progress will be judged. We lost in the first game of the World Cup qualifiers, but we still want to get through to the second round. That is the dream. I've got experience of playing in South Asian leagues, so I know that as long as we train hard, we can become the best in South Asia. There is a plan in place, and Giotoku and Takeda have the drive and determination to make it work. I would like to bring the best within me to the Nepalese people. That's the only thing. If I try my hardest, I think the results will follow. So I would like to work to the best of my ability.
The way he wants us to train is slightly different. It's not so much the physical side of things, it's more tactical. He wants us to work with the ball and to improve our touch and technique. Also, he teaches us how to pass and move. This is the main focus. Nawayuk Shrestha is Nepal's rising star. For him, there is no greater honor than wearing his national team shirt. When you play for your country and win, it's a much bigger deal than when you play for your club. It's something within you. To put on that Nepalese shirt with a Nepal flag on it is unbelievable. For me, the best moment is when the national anthem plays, before the match starts. At that moment, I get some sort of internal strength. That's how I feel. Now, Shrestha is seen as something of a local hero. People show me respect now and know my name. When I go somewhere, they recognize me, and it feels great to think people know me. I feel happy, but I'm just a professional footballer. Some people might now call me a star or something. That's what fans do. They address me like a star. The media creates that, but I just think of myself as a footballer. That's my job. In women's football in Nepal, there's one player who stands out from the crowd. Hello, I'm Annie Lama, captain of Nepal's women's team. I have 37 international caps and I've scored 35 goals. Small in stature, but a big hitter. Anu Lama is Nepal's female football star. Employed by the Nepalese Armed Police Force, Lama also represents the APF women's team. Football has given her the chance to fulfill her dreams. For me, being a football player is a way to achieve something in life. By playing football, we can make something of ourselves. Football means that we can shape our future. At a Kathmandu school, children gather for a special screening of a documentary movie called Sunakali. The subject is football and a group of girls from Mugu. Nepal's poor remote mountain region. The film's director was Bodraj Bhatt. I was there in Mogu for the photography purpose. And the, the girls were they're playing football above of the snow, this three feet of snow. It looks like, okay, there is no proper field there, but they were playing football above the 3,500 meters high in the Western Himalayas. Then I said, okay, this could be a good story. For the kids of Kathmandu, this was an education about their own country. The film follows Mugu's mountain girls as they leave their families for the first time and travel on foot for two days to play a friendly match against another village. There is two types of Nepal. One is Kathmandu, one is Mugu. And even the, the people of Kathmandu, they didn't know about the real situation of Mugu. I want to see the reaction about the, what they could feel about Sunakali. Maybe uh, they, could, uh, they could understand, or maybe they could also learn, or they could get uh, the message from the Sunakali. The Mugu girls are beaten on penalties in the friendly, experiencing defeat on a football pitch for the first time. But the big competition is still to come. A 14-team tournament in the far-off town of Kailali. This is a story about uh, uh, a different story where the, the girls are playing a football, but they are the fighting against the parents. And but the, there's no ground, even though they are walking from one place to another place, uh, three days walking and sleeping inside the jungle, and just to playing the football, uh, just to play the 90 minute football. So this is a story about a, a different type of other World Cup. They got the opportunity through the football that they never seen a boss, they never seen any any development, but they never will be outside of the village. After that, they got a chance to make to see the world and to see the different world development. They have a first time, they have a plane, and everything is first time for their life. 
In Kailali, the Mugu team are unstoppable, beating teams from across Nepal. And a hero emerges, the scorer of six goals, 14-year-old Sunakali, whose name means golden girl. I want to show to the world that this is also football, where there is no money, no any facility, no any opportunity, but they have still the passion to play football. These girls are fighting against the parents just to play football. Back home, the girls are paraded through Mugu as heroes. Sunakali is dubbed the Messi of the Himalayas. And crucially, attitudes are changed. So often victims of discrimination, the girls are accepted as equals. Can football change the society? Yes, it can be. Look at the Sunakali. You can see that everything is changing in their life. The whole perception about the society, perception about uh, the parents, and it's not only the uh, earning the money, but it's also the changing the society, society perception, and also giving the opportunity. An incredible story, underlined by the reaction of the audience in Kathmandu. This is really, really the because we're so happy that all the people stand up and making a one-minute clapping and. And they feel, I feel so happy that, OK, finally, the Sunakali became a real Sunakali for them. Uh, I love the movie, like how she played football. We need to uh, bring up those girls to uh, show that uh, there are hidden talents in, uh, in the remote areas. So they should get a chance uh, to play, uh, play football in front of everyone to show their hidden talent. I love football. Uh, football is my best friend.